Uh, yeah. Right. I'm due to be running my first uh, training session on how to help or teach or show, I don't know, show um, other adults, or other people for that matter, young people as well, on how they can be a choice coach, so how they can help other people simplify their choices. Okay, so this video is just a bit intro into that. Uh, I'm just going to explain uh, the three uh, risks that I often occur when I'm choice coaching and how I manage them. Okay, so being a choice coach, there are three basic risks I've discovered. One is I get too many choices. So if I'm coaching somebody to help make their own choices, I've got to be very, very, very careful through the conversation to not generate too many choices for them. If I generate too many choices, uh, it often creates confusion, uncertainty, and security even. Uh, and often reduces their belief that they can make their own choices. So I've got to make sure I don't generate too many. Uh, especially if, if I'm coaching them for something that I'm, that I'm that's a very similar experience to me, so I know the choices I've made that work for me. I've got to be very, 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 very careful not to go all the options for them. My goal is to simplify. Risk number two is I push. I can't think of a better word for someone being coached other than client, um, but the person being coached. If I push the person being coached along the timeline, so for example, I might be in a difficult place and I want to help them, I want to help them quickly, so I go, here's week one, especially if they're in the similar situations where I found myself in, I have to resist the urge to go, right, you need to jump here, then here, then here, then here, and then you'll be fixed, or happier. I've got to resist that urge. They have to go at their speed. The thing with simplified choices, being a simplified choice coach, um, <clears throat> is very much to do with, with making the, the person being coached own their choices. They're their choices. They are going to learn to be resilient and make their own choices. And we're just here to help them become more resilient. So at no point should I push them along, even though I know the certain choices, because we're on similar experiences, they'll need to make. It's not my call. They go at their speed that they're comfortable with. Full stop. Okay, my third, my third little guideline to help me be a coach, if you like, one I, when I stick to, is I don't give advice. So in other words, there's risk is that I do give advice. I don't do that. I have to avoid that like the plague. Um, because if I do give advice, what I tend to do what tends to happen, the person I'm coaching starts to do what I tell them to do. And they stop becoming their choices and they become my choices. And then at that point again, what's happened is, my coach, in my eyes, the coaching's failed because I'm no longer helping the person I'm coaching to become more resilient, able to make their own choices. They're now doing what I told them to do. Okay, so my, my three traps, if you like, for... Uh, for, for, for people I'm coaching to end up doing what I tell them to do so these are my traps, these are my pitfalls that I fall into I give them too many choices I push them along and I give advice so the corollary would obviously be the opposite of that being if I don't do those three things so I'm constantly listening to myself to not do these three things if I don't do those three things as a choice coach, I've realised I am actually enabling my people I'm coaching to make their own choices. And this is what will make them more resilient. So, one of my guidelines to really help me not fall into those three traps is I focus on making sure every coaching session I have, the person who I'm coaching leaves with one, only one, simplified choice. Ideally, we write it down, or they write it down, whilst we're together. And then they leave. So every coaching session, they leave with their own simplified choice, which often means we also start it with the previous simplified choice. Okay? So it's the simplified choice that drives that. And what that does is stop me, my, if I utterly focus on that outcome, what I tend to do, that stops me from creating too many choices, it stops me pushing the client, and it also stops me giving advice. Okay? So if you like... Whenever I go into a choice coaching session, or I should say a simplified choice coaching session, my goal 
It's for the person I'm coaching to get that. The simplified choice, positive left, positive right. Okay, once I achieve that, if I achieve that in 10 minutes, then we shake hands and, and, and go. If it takes three hours, then we stay until we've got it. <laughs> okay, and that is my outcome. That's the goal of the outcome. So if, if uh, we're looking for a choice coach and you want a choice coach, what you're going to get is the ability to find simplified choices. And obviously that's easier if the choice coach has had similar experiences uh, to myself. So it's nice to have a choice coach that's had the same experiences. But either way, the simplified choice, all clients, all people being coached leave with a simplified choice. Okay? Hopefully I haven't just confused that by changing the context. But So I'll just repeat. I know it's a bit long, but it's aimed at people who want to be choice coaches, so <laughs> hopefully. So if you want to be a simplified choice coach, you have to avoid these three pitfalls, giving the client too many choices, pushing the client along, and giving advice. When you avoid those three pitfalls, by all the simplified choice coaches, focus is making sure that at the end of every coaching session, the client, person being coached, leaves with one simplified choice. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot.